Okay, number eight, and we're back. Uh, let's take a look at this question over here. Uh, we have students in a math class, and they are rolling a six-sided cube or a die, numbers one through six. And the results are listed below, right? Um, results that came up, uh, the amount of times it came out one was three times, and number two came out six times, number three came out four times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, based on this uh, chart or, or table here, uh, what is the probability of tossing a 4, the chance of getting a 4, right? Um, for any die, the, the result, uh, the probability of getting a 4 is 1 out of 6. But because this question is uh, based on the data above, uh, we need to calculate the probability of tossing a 4 according to the table over here. So let's t see the number 4 and how many times that they roll a 4. Right, it's going to be 6 times. They roll a 4 6 times, so that will be 6 out of the total amount of rows that they take, or the total number of numbers that came out, and you add them up, that's 30. 6 out of 30. Choice 2. Okay, number 9, we have a right triangle. We know it's a right triangle because there's this little symbol here that means it's a right triangle. And right triangles and uh, uh, usually a formula that comes to mind is the Pythagorean theorem and we know we need, we're going to use it when we see that there's two sides that we know and we're looking for the missing side over there. Okay. So uh, what is the formula? Well it's going to be a, a common one a squared plus b squared right, equals c squared. Okay. So which one's which? Okay, the legs of the triangle, the legs here, this side and this side, the two shorter sides. That's going to be the A and B. That's going to be A and B. It doesn't matter which one goes for A. A. What matters is three and five need to be on the left side of the equation to fill, to uh, substitute for A and B. All right. So this will be three squared plus five squared. Okay, and the longest side is always a C. The hypotenuse here, this long side, which is X, always C. So that's going to be X squared. Right, so we fit them in and just solve it out. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, equals X squared. 9 plus 25, that's going to be 34. 34 equals X squared. All right. And to get rid of the square over here, we take the square root of x squared, right? Which will give me x. So we got also got to take the square root of 34, and that's the answer. X equals square root of 34. Okay. Choice three. Okay, number ten. Uh, what is the uh, uh, simplest radical form of uh, square root of 32? All right, an easy way of doing this is uh, I tell my kids to actually do a fract factor tree. And you can actually break down 32 into prime factors. Think about two numbers that multiply to give you 32. Well, how about uh, 8 times 4? Okay. And keep on breaking them down until you can't break down anymore. 4, uh, four is 2 times 2. Uh, 8 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. Uh, what happens is uh, square root of 32 actually, it's just really 2 times itself 5 times. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And with square roots, and only square roots here, for every 2 number inside the radical sign, you can cross 2 out to take 1 out. Okay out and another two of a kind we can take another two out and whatever you take out you're gonna multiply so that's really just we took out two twos so that's two times two comes a four what's left inside is a two right we cross out the other two it's just a two left and that's the answer four radical two four radical two okay. Another way you can approach this is actually think about square root of 32. All right, spot out a perfect square. What's a perfect square? Where times something will give you 32. Well, 
uh, four, all right, that's a perfect square. And you can actually multiply by eight, okay? And from here, instead of breaking down uh, to twos, uh, what you can do is actually, if you know the square root of four is two, you can take out two right away, okay? So it'd be two uh, square root of eight and I'm sorry, one mistake here. Here, uh, let me scratch this off. Okay, there's actually another perfect square here. So let me start off again. All right, please forgive me. Uh, 32 is actually another perfect square that's a little bit bigger and easier to work with. Is actually 16. All right, 16 times two. All right, so 32 same as 16 times two. And if you know that 16 is a perfect square. Uh, you can cross this out right now and just take out that 4. The answer is just 4 square root of 2, which is the same. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Number 11. All right, if the speed of sound is uh, 344 meters per second, uh, what is the approximate speed of sound in meters per hour? Well. And they actually give you a little chart here that helps a lot. Right? In case you didn't know, there's 60 seconds to a minute, and there's 60 minutes to an hour. So you want to convert seconds to minute first. You can take 344 times right, 60 seconds. Right? And that'll give you how many a distance of sound when it traveled through one minute. But if I want to find it per hour, I'm going to take that number and multiply by 60 one more time. So there's 60 minutes in an hour. And you multiply these uh, two numbers, uh, you will get the answer, which is choice four. Okay. One million two hundred thirty-eight thousand and four hundred. Okay, number twelve. The sum of two numbers is 47, and the difference is 15. All right, what is the larger number? Uh, if you like, you can write this out using a legend. The uh, smaller number, let that be x. Right? Larger number, well, uh, if the difference is 15, that means they're 15 numbers away. Right? The larger number must be x plus 15. Right? Okay. Now the sum of the two numbers are is a 47, so just write out x, which is a small number, plus the larger number, x plus 15, right, and set it equal to 47. Right, solve it out. x plus x is 2x plus 15 equals 47. Subtract 15 on both sides. Two x equals thirty two. Right? Divide by two. And x equals sixteen. Now you might think that's sixteen is the answer, and if you look through the multiple choices here, you actually see choice one and gives you that answer. A lot of people make the mistake of actually choosing sixteen right right away. But the question, if you read carefully, is actually looking for the larger number. 16 is actually a smaller number. Uh, uh, the larger number is 16 plus 15. Right? And that's actually 31, which is choice 2. Right? So look out for that and just be careful and go over your answer one more time right, before you move on. Okay. Uh, 